Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to show you how to add catch lights to your subject's eyes. Now, the idea from this video came from someone on Instagram who was struggling with a photo that had none and wanted to know how he could fix it. The reason why catch lights are important is without them, the eyes tend to look lifeless. Even people who aren't photographers will look at an image where there's no catch lights and feel like there's something off about it. So today I'm going to show you the quick way to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate our background layer, and we're going to do that with Control J, and then we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the eyes. Now, this image has a catch light in one eye, but a very faint one in the other one. Later, I'm going to show you how to actually fix it if there's no catch lights, but I wanted to start with what to do if there's just one that's without or one that's faint. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in. Then we're going to hit L to bring up our lasso tool, and then we're going to draw a quick circle around the catch light that we're going to copy here. And that one apparently was not large enough. So now we're going to hit Control J, and that's going to duplicate it. And now you can actually just go ahead and delete this background layer, or this duplicate layer, because we're not going to actually use that. So now we're going to go ahead and hold down Control and start dragging this little catch light here. And now we're going to go ahead and zoom in here, and for here we can see where the catch light should have been. And we just kind of position it there. And now if we lower the opacity here, about 30 we can actually just kind of like see where we are and that's like pretty much spot on where we want it to be so now let's go ahead and toggle that to about like 70 and go ahead and zoom out and I think it's a little too bright at 70 so I'm actually gonna go ahead and reduce the opacity to about 60 see how that looks pretty good okay so that's the fast way to do this and that's if you have a catch light already now, say your image does not have a catch light. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm just going to make a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm just going to heal this out to make it look like there was no catch light in this eye. Just so I can show you what it would look like if, you know, you had to just do this kind of on your own. So, on an image like this, if there was no catch light in the eye, the important thing to think about is where your shadows are because catch lights come from light sources. So if you don't have the catch light on the right side of the eye, it's gonna be really off-putting. It's gonna look strange and people will just kind of feel uneasy looking at it because it doesn't make sense. Because if you look here, this is the shadow side of the face on the right. If I were to put a catch light here, your mind would automatically tell like something is wrong because if there's a catch light on the side of the face that's in shadow, which it would be completely unrealistic. So you have to keep that in mind. So we're gonna put the catch light on the left side because that's where the light was coming from in this case. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer and then I'm gonna just hit B for the brush tool. And I'm just gonna right click and bring up this and I'm just gonna select this brush right here, which is just a regular hard edged brush. And I'm going to change the hardness to about like 80% just so it's a little soft. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in. Now, if we notice, once again, let's pay attention to the shadows here. So because it's hitting the top of her hat and then there's this hard shadow, and then it's also carving out the side of her cheek, we know that the light is from above. So we have to pay attention to that. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And let's just kind of... Actually, let's, you know what? Let's go ahead and reduce the hardness to about 60 because I'm thinking 80 might still be a little too hard. And now I'm going to switch to my mouse instead of my Wacom pen because I want to have a solid brush stroke here because, you know, it is very pressure sensitive if you're using a pen tablet for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a click here. And now that doesn't look very good right now because we haven't done anything to it. So um, just don't worry, it's going to look a lot better. So if we back out, like, see, it's it's a little too strong. It's too white. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a Gaussian blur and we're going to do that by hitting uh, control shift G. If you have the keyboard shortcut set up, if you don't, you're going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur. Um, it just brings up the same thing. Uh, and then we're going to apply, I'd say like a three pixel blur. Actually, I think two looks a little bit better, maybe like 2.5. Yeah, 2.5 looks nice. Okay, so that helped a little bit, but it's still too strong. So we're gonna just lower the opacity of the layer. And I say something about like 60. 60 is almost a little too soft, maybe 70. Let's go ahead and back up. And if you're way zoomed in, you can obviously tell like it was added. 
but when you're looking at the image from actual viewing distance, you can't really tell that that was not there previously. So now zoomed out, if we toggle that layer on and off, we can see it just adds a lot more dimension to the eyes. They don't look so flat and lifeless and it just makes the image overall a lot more pleasing. I hope this was able to help you guys today. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.